jazz, we wonder, how does jazz achieve its power to possess its sound and propagate musicians both majestic and profound? We think of jazz as urban music, but imagine a child in a rural place raised by a possessed and astounded father an army man who went AWOL to hear Billie Holiday sing. Wouldn't the sounds of jazz music resonate in the natural world all around this small person? Wouldn't it seem logical and obvious that Bird was so named for his virtuosity of flight and song? that the lyricism and majestic joy of the music would remind the child of leaves and breezes, the cries of birds and animals, daylight, nightlight, stormlight, that the child of loving jazz would see the music move the way fireflies move, the way clouds gather and disperse, the way fish move in water, and water moves in light. The way the lone crow lives slowly into the winter sky. The way the day is this day. Duke Ellington, it is told, pulled his band to the side of a forested country road at 2 o'clock a.m. en route to a gig. He asked all of his musicians to get out of the cars and stand by the roadside at the edge of the forest. Listen, he commanded. For 15 minutes, the Duke Ellington Orchestra listened to the sounds of the nocturnal woods. They heard cries and whispers, footfalls, accents of falling twigs, obligati of insects, birds, and wind. All was rhythm, sonic texture, melody, velocity. As they turned back to their cars, Duke said, we've got to get this into our music. <laughs> 